Review. Skin Bends. Recognizing the Signs of Cutaneous Decompression Sickness by Marty McCafferty. The diver was a 54-year-old female. She was experienced with approximately 400 lifetime dives and physically fit with no relevant medical history. She was diving for a week-long vacation in the Caribbean and had been diving for two days with four dives every day. Her maximum depth was 25 meters. All dives were on air and her bottom times were within the computer's no decompression limits. She spent at least one hour on the surface between dives and at least two hours between the morning and afternoon dives. After the last dive of the second day, she began to feel soreness in her abdomen. She noticed areas of blotchiness that looked like bruising. The affected areas were tender, but the deeper tissue rather than the surface tissue was affected. She reported feeling as though she had done too many sit-ups. Some slight itching was present, but soreness and discoloration were the most prominent. Based on previous experience, the dive staff believed that this was the result of a sting by a marine animal. The blotchiness resolved within two hours, but the soreness remained. It was mild enough though, and she could enjoy dinner and casual evening walks with her travel companions. By the next morning, the soreness was almost completely resolved, and she decided to participate in the morning dives. The first dive was an uneventful drift dive to 18 meters for 55 minutes. The abdominal pain increased following the dive. She attributed this increase to the physical activity of the dive. The next dive, again to about 18 meters for 50 minutes, resulted in her arriving at the surface with abdominal discomfort and soreness of both breasts. Upon removing her wetsuit, she noticed the areas of blotching had returned, but this time they were darker and larger than those of the previous day. There were no blotches on her breasts, but they were tender. The symptoms were again attributed to a sting or allergic reaction of an unknown irritant. She had never experienced any symptoms like these before on previous dives. The dive boat returned to shore for lunch before the afternoon dives. 45 minutes after her last dive, the blotchy areas seemed to be diminishing again. But the diver began to complain of blurred vision, dizziness and general discomfort and malaise. Her companions realized she was confused regarding their location and she had no memory of the morning's dives. Her companions were alarmed and summoned the dive staff who placed her on high flow oxygen and arranged transport to the local hyperbaric clinic. Upon her arrival at the clinic, the hyperbaric physician examined her. After 20 minutes of breathing oxygen, her memory was no longer impaired and the dizziness and blurred vision had completely resolved. The blotchy areas had faded, but the abdominal and breast soreness was unchanged. The physician diagnosed her with type 2 decompression sickness and immediately initiated treatment in the chamber. She was treated with a US Navy treatment table 6. During the treatment, all the blotchiness resolved and the soreness in her abdomen and breasts was greatly improved. Besides residual soreness, her examination after treatment was normal. The physician instructed her to return to the clinic the following morning for a follow-up exam. The next morning her soreness was the same as it had been after the treatment table 6. The physician treated her again, this time using the shorter Navy treatment table 5. The soreness was further reduced and the physician recommended managing the residual soreness with ibuprofen. He also strongly advised against further diving. The soreness completely resolved over the next two days and the diver flew home without any return of symptoms or other problems. So, what happened? When confronted with unfamiliar symptoms, many of us will try to relate complaints to something familiar, even when the conclusion is an unlikely one. 
In this case, the dive staff assumed the diver's symptoms resulted from a marine animal sting and didn't consider or know any other possible explanations. Skin symptoms of decompression sickness can mimic other conditions, but there are important aspects of skin bends that help distinguish them from other dermatological conditions. Divers may have heard skin bends described as a rash or hives, but those conditions tend to report dark, mottled areas that are not typically raised. A careful evaluation, including review of medical history and dive profiles, can further clarify the condition. Itching, burning, and other unusual sensations may be present, but seem to occur less frequently. Deep tissue soreness and tenderness are the most frequently reported symptoms along with the areas that appear bruised or blotchy. The surface of the skin may or may not be tender. The exact cause and mechanism of skin bends is not clearly understood and accurate predictors of individual susceptibility do not yet exist. Based on the reports that Dan receives, the symptoms most commonly occur in the area of the body with the most fatty or adipose tissue. This includes the abdomen, thighs, triceps area, buttocks, and in the case of women, the breast tissue. According to Dan Research, approximately 20% of divers who experience skin bends have accompanying neurological symptoms. This case illustrates the occurrence of such symptoms, confusion, visual blurring, and memory loss. The diver's presentation was alarming and her companions recognized its seriousness. Any diver who presents with potential skin bends should be placed on oxygen and seek medical evaluation. Neurological symptoms may be subtle. While most cases of skin bends are relatively mild, decompression sickness is worth avoiding and there are some basic strategies that may help reduce the likelihood of symptom occurrence. Using nitrox while diving air tables or setting your computer to air will reduce the nitrogen load and limit dive deaths. If you're breathing air, shorten bottom times by 5 to 10 minutes and consider prolonging the safety stop beyond 3 minutes. Divers who experience repeated episodes of decompression sickness should seek a thorough evaluation by a physician trained in diving medicine. Early recognition of symptoms is very important. If signs or symptoms of decompression sickness occur, suspend all further diving, initiate oxygen therapy and seek medical attention. Breathing oxygen on the surface can provide remarkable improvement but a physician must determine whether further treatment is necessary. Even if mild soreness is the only symptom, further diving is extremely likely to cause symptoms to recur or to worsen. If you have any unusual symptoms after diving, don't hesitate to call the DAN emergency hotline number to discuss the situation.